Hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh, latest presentation in the Opening the Box series from the Richardson Sloan Special Collections Centers of the Davenport Public Libraries, where we take a closer look at one of our archival collections. My name is Katie Reinhardt. I am the Special Collections Librarian. And today I'll be sharing documents that form collection number 2004-70, the Davenport Museum of Art. And that name is the predecessor to the museum we know now as the Figgy Museum of Art. First, I'll offer a brief history of the organization. Then I'll act as your tour guide as we visit the various record types available in this particular collection. This is a photo of the museum's first location on West 5th Street in Davenport when it was called the Municipal Art Gallery. And it's one of several photographs in the collection. So a sneak preview of type, different types of records we'll be looking at today. There's always been a strong interest in the visual arts here in Davenport. The first formal organization was created in the 1880s, the Davenport Art Association. It presented exhibits and offered studio art classes at the Davenport Academy of Sciences building. And this is a catalog of the paintings uh, available that you could view there in 1898, I believe it's the date. In 1922, Charles August Ficke, who was a German immigrant, an attorney, land developer, former mayor of Davenport, supporter of the library, and all around civic-minded kind of fellow, offers his private art collection to the city of Davenport. It includes Mexican paintings of the vice regal period between 1535 and 1821. Also representative examples of European art and American work. Ficka's gift came with the condition that the city house and maintain his collection so that the artworks would be available for all of the citizens to enjoy. In 1925, the city secures state approval to establish a publicly supported art gallery and renovates the former Battery B Armory Building at 120 West 5th Street to house Vicky's collection. The Davenport Municipal Art Gallery opens its doors to the public in October of that year. And this is the catalog of the 334 paintings that comprise the first part of his gift. On the right is a list of the original trustees and officers and the organization's mission statement. And here's a photograph of the um, Interior of the gallery, first one is from the 20s, and the second one is from the 1940s. In 1927, the Friends of Art is formed to support the development of the gallery's collection and its art education efforts. It provided a crucial fundraising role for the gallery. In 1929, the gallery received one of, one of its uh, most important and extensive collections. Dr. Clarence Theodore Lindley donated his collection of over 200 American paintings. In 1952, concerns were growing about the condition and safety of the gallery building. And, uh, and the museum began plans, or the gallery began plans to build a new facility. Uh, there's a newspaper article here that mentions that the floor was caving in at the art gallery. Uh, there's another that shows that the steps up to the entrance were deteriorating as well. 
So by 1957, the Park Commission, uh, the Davenport Park Commission, had approved the use of the Carnegie State land for a new museum complex, and support for the project was provided by the Putnam Memorial Fund. In 1963, the new gallery, designed by the Moline firm of Swanson and Maywall, opens at 1737 12th Street. And in 1964, with the aid of newspaper publisher Philip Adler, the gallery acquires the Grant Wood collection. In 1967, Dr. Walter Neiswanger's patronage begins the building the gallery's collection of Haitian art. And in 1972, the Weiss Fine Arts Building opened, adding an auditorium and classrooms to the complex. So these photos show uh, the curators uh, packing things up in the old Fifth Street Gallery. Uh, here's an aerial view of the gallery and then um, the Putnam Museum was also a part of that complex. Here's another photo picture of the Weiss, the Weiss building. This is the interior of the new building. And this is a slightly later um, image showing um, a tour of the gallery and the visitors are looking at one of the Mexican colonial paintings donated by Becca. In 1983, the gallery is accredited by the American Association of Museums and it's re renamed the Davenport Museum of Art. They're hoisting the new sign up onto the gallery here, or the new museum, I should say. In the 90s, planning began for a downtown Davenport Museum of Art building. And in 1999, David Chipperfield is chosen as the architect for the new building after a design competition was held. In 2001, a Vision Iowa grant for downtown is secured. And in 2003, the V.O. Figge and Elizabeth Call Figge Charitable Foundation donates $13 million to the project. And in 2005, the Figge Art Museum that we know today opened at 225 West 2nd Street. So before we begin our tour of the material types in this collection, first I want to explain that it's not really a comprehensive record of all of the museum's activities from 1925 to the present. We actually don't know much about who exactly created the various files. In 2004, as the museum staff was preparing to move to the new building, they called the library and offered us several cartons worth of materials. There was no accompanying description or provenance information available when we went to pick them up. So what I'll discuss here today is basically all that we got. So because they aren't as visually interesting as some of the other records, I'll try to move through these quickly. These are the leadership and government governance documents. Um, there's the bylaws, uh, several boxes of, these are the bylaws as they were adopted and revised in 1973. The Board of Trustees meeting minutes from the 80s and the 90s are in the next image. Uh, there's a list of the committees of the Board of Trustees and Here's an example of the minutes of board committees, such as the minutes of the resource committee here from February, 1994. Other board documents like policies. This is the code of ethics for trustees and professional staff from 1984. And then a similar document, the guidelines for professional practice from 1997. 
and some other documents created by the Board of Trustees, including the schedule and program for a retreat in April 2000 called Davenport Museum of Art, Reinventing Ourselves. And there's uh, Board of Trustees communications with the city, such as this 1952 letter to the mayor and city council from the president, Fred Ray, stating that the building was a fire trap and that began the process of um, building the 12th Street location. And there's some we can identify as director's files. These were kept by Steve Bradley, who was a director in the late 80s and 90s. Um, the Davenport Museum of Art was a city department, so the director had to go to department heads meetings, like this one from June 1987. He also belonged to several groups and committees of the city. Uh, there's memoranda here from the Leisure and Culture Group, the Mayor's Reorganization Committee of 1993, and the Davenport Riverfront Task Force in 1998. Here's a, here's a, a letter, a memoranda, um, on the left, uh, when there, an accredited accreditation visit was made to the Davenport Museum of Art. Um, and also from that same period is this receipt from director L.G. Hoffman, acknowledging the value of a painting that was donated to, to the gallery by Philip Adler in 1973. Hoffman was an expert in Haitian art and was the author of uh, this publication called Haitian Art, the Le Legend and Legacy of the Na Naive Tradition. And these are page mock-ups from an enormous binder of the manuscript of the book. Also likely coming from the director's files, is this proposal for the Figgy Building from David Chipperfield Architects and the conceptual drawings contained within. And these are some massing studies that were done after the firm got the job. There are lots of miscellaneous administrative files in this collection. Um, like this attendance tally sheet from 1971, a notebook with a list of judges for a local art competition and lists of the award recipients over the years. And a letter that's a quote from the Davenport Stationery Shop for printing a gallery bulletin. And there's also, um, this attendance record and mailing list for the Saturday free art class that was offered in 1929 and 1930. The majority of the materials in this collection were produced by the museum for the visitor and are a little more in visually interesting for a presentation like this. Um, there are many, many uh, exhibits exhibition guides available. Here's a sampling from the 1930s through the 1950s. More from the 60s and 70s. And there's some themes to the exhibits that the museum pre presented. They certainly uh, focused on their collection strengths. Uh, this exhibit from 1952 called Art in Colonial Mexico. And then the Art of Haiti. Also, that was in 1969. 
There are also exhibits in honor of significant milestones for the museum, such as the opening of the new building on 12th Street, the Silver Jubilee in 1951, and the 30th anniversary of the gallery. The museum mission was in part to feature local and regional art, artists and art collectors. There's a, um, there was an exhibit of oil paintings from Quad Cities area collectors from 1942 and art in Iowa and the Quad Cities from 1967. And the museum also hosted a series of juried art shows called Art and Artists Along the Mississippi. And these are the catalogs for the first and third annual um, <clears throat> shows in 1940 and in 1950. Individual local artists such as Helen Henriksen, um, Sister Clarice Ebert and Donna Mary Hart from Mary Faculty of Art Faculty from Mary from Mary Crest College. Uh, this is Beverly Pepper's sculpture called the Moline Markers from 1981. Uh, the museum was also committed to the local schools art programs. This is a brochure for the Davenport Community School District's secondary school art exhibit from March, 1962. And it wasn't just art that they exhibited there. Um, other artistic pursuits such as uh, the, the flower show of the Tri-City Men's Rose and Garden Club in 1945. There are many materials um, advertising and listing the educational opportunities through the museum. Um, there are classes in drawing and painting from 1929 and an art appreciation class, 1943 to 44. A summer program of classes from 1977. and the children's Saturday morning art class that's also from the 70s. The museum produced educational package for school teachers and others. One for, for the Haitian art collection and the permanent collection, uh, one for studying Egyptian art and one for Greek art. And this is a, a guide to public sculpture in the Quad City. The museum also produced a, um, another category of materials in the collection are the advertising and programs for events held at the museum. There were um, there were recital dramatic recitals. Um, lectures, film series, um, and these are from the 40s and 20s and 40s uh, and 30s. And these all on this side are from 1986. Season. And other events, Programs include the laying of the cornerstone for the 12th Street building and the opening of the Weiss building. There are many invitations for fundraising events, such as the Grand Gallery Ball from May 1970, and that was 
it's it, it was a, like a velvety flocked kind of cover that you opened up you see the vellum uh, list of donors inside and the menu and then there was a party for the 50th anniversary in 1975 <clears throat> These are some of the brochures with general information about the museum and its offerings from the 1930s, 50s and 60s, more current ones. There's a lot of calendars too. This is from the 90s, January 1990. Newsletters and bulletins are also part of the collection. These are from 52, 69, 73, and some more from the 80s. Two from the 90s, and this last one, not sure of the date, but it was a special newsletter um, with profiles of the architectural firms that were finalists in the competition for the Biggie Museum building. General public relations materials were published by the museum. These are the museum's annual reports. From 1975, they also had a biennial report. There are many press releases. This one is from all the way back in 1925, describing the collection. Um, these announced the, the a new board of president. Um, and announcements of the renovation plans in 1995 and the announcement of the receipt of the $12 million from the Biggie Foundation in 2000. And the collection also includes evidence that the public relations uh, campaigns were successful. Um, the, they, so this is a feature from the Iowan Magazine about the gallery in 1963. Uh, the museum saved many, many news clippings and articles like this, magazine articles. And that's probably one of the most useful parts of the collection. Uh, this is a picture of scrapbooks. There's 10 piles of them here of scrapbooks from the 1920s through to the 1990s that we have wrapped up. Um, and they're especially be good because they're a chronological record of everything that happened, all of the news that there was about the museum, and it included exhibit brochures and event information too, not just clippings. This is from 1929, some pages from that one. These are from 1953. And so the scrapbooks are really where you go um, when you first are looking for information about the history of the, of the museum. Uh, we also have the records of the Friends of Art. The, this is, uh, this is Josephine Georgian, the first president 
Um, and this is the Articles of Incorporation. This is a brochure from the Friends from 1948-49. And a photograph of Grace French Evans, who was president in the 30s and 40s. The Friends of Art sponsored tours. This one uh, to Chicago to view a Chinese art exhibit. And this is a photo of the executive committee of the Friends of Art from 1989. And the Fred Friends of Art had two subdivisions, the Gallery Guild. They volunteered in all aspects of running the museum, but especially in um, putting on fine arts fair and running the, the gallery shop. This is their handbook on the right from the 1993 and um, a luncheon program uh, with a speaker from another from the 70, 1976. And the Bose Art Committee was another subdivision of the Friends of Art. Um, this is these are some newspaper articles of their first the first annual Beaux Arts Ball in October 1953. Um, and we have a collection of color slides of the event that are fun to take a look at. So this was a fundraising event modeled on the, the um, fundraising or the student parties um, from the Ecole de Beaux-Arts in France. And it was a typical thing that art museums did to raise money. Um, yeah, and there are also two enormous scrapbooks that were even too big for me to open up and take photographs of belonging to the Beaux Arts, Friends of Art. So the best way to find out more about this collection is to look at our research guide. You can find them on the genealogy and history page of the library's main webpage. Click on the one for Charles A. Ficka, and that includes tabs for the man Ficka, um, his son, Arthur Davidson. And the third one is about just the gallery. And here I've opened up the window for all of the archives and manuscript collections that we have that relate to the museum. You can also access our collections through our archive space portal and through the library's catalog. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, thank you. And here's our contact information. So again, thank you for joining me this afternoon. And I hope you can come to special co collections to visit the with the uh, Davenport Museum of Art collection.